I always hesitate when I give someone my personal email because I just never know what they'll do with it. They may start spamming my inbox or even worse, give it away like candy. Then I'm really screwed. That's why I started using Simple Login, an app that lets me quickly create a fake email address which I can then use when I need to sign up for newsletters, create new accounts, or just give it to someone who I don't trust. Every email sent to my fake address will be forwarded to my real personal one. You following along? And let's say one day that I'm tired of the newsletter sending me emails. In that case, I can simply turn off that fake email address with a simple switch. No more spam. And it's all thanks to Eastern Efficiency 3 for recommending this app to me on my subreddit page. If it wasn't for him, I would have never found it. If any of you have an awesome app that you would like for me to show off on this channel or in the next episode, go ahead and post it on my subreddit page at How To Men, and if I choose it, I'll be sure to shout out your name in the next episode. Most of you are probably the IT guy in your family, and even though you love them, it can't be super frustrating when they need your help over the phone, because they almost never know what you're talking about. That's why I personally use Screenshot Flow to make it easier to help my loved ones with an issue they're having. Screenshot Flow lets me create a diagram of the step-by-step -step solution to an issue that I'm helping someone fix. Think of it like a manual or a map. To create a flow diagram, I just open up Screenshot Flow, tap on Create a New Diagram, then tap the plus icon and allow it to cast my screen. From there, I jump into the app that I'm helping someone with, it's most likely Facebook, and then I drag the pointer to where the person should first tap. Once I move the pointer, I click it to take a screenshot and then select keep plus next. Afterward, it'll throw me back to the previous screen so I can tap again within that same spot to go to the next page. From there, I do the same process of dragging the pointer and tapping on it to take screenshots for every screen that the person will need to interact with. And finally, once you've solved the issue, tap the pointer one last time and select keep finish. The app will then automatically generate a flow diagram and you can make it bigger by tapping on the gear icon and changing the max number of screens in one row to just two. That's your entire flow diagram. Finally, take a long screenshot of it and just send it to the person you're helping. Unfortunately, the app doesn't let you save the diagram as a picture, just an HTML file, but a scrollable screenshot should do just fine. If you're enjoying this new quick style format where we jump straight into the action with no intro, drop a thumbs up and I'll do it again for the next episode. Edge Card Launcher lets you access all of your favorite apps, contacts, and settings from anywhere by simply swiping upwards on the edge of the screen. It's incredible, and I use it all the time, even when I'm using the phone with one hand because it's so easily accessible. I can control my music, change the volume, toggle the flashlight, or auto-rotate, and more. It works without a problem and it's free to download. There's a pro version to let you open the launcher from both sides of the screen and to have no limits on the number of apps or contacts you can add. But for me, I found the free version to be just fine, especially since you can already include none of your favorite apps or contacts and opening it from just one side is fine by me. One of the best ways to improve your phone's security is by downloading Anti-Stalker, the sponsor of this video, since it protects users from stalkers and apps that collect information maliciously for marketing purposes without your consent. Anti-Stalker tracks down every app that is using your microphone, camera, or sending data in the background without you even knowing it. Sure, Android 12 does the same thing with privacy dots, but Anti-Stalker still does a much better job at detecting every app. A section with an anti-stalker called Monitoring Console lets me see all the apps that have used a microphone, camera, and sent data. And you can tap on an app that has sent data to see where it went, including the IP, server, and country. Anti-stalker even lets you know the reason for the data collection, whether it was for advertising, profiling, stalker aware, etc. It honestly made me realize how vulnerable my data was. Luckily, Anti-Stalker allowed me to block all those pesky apps from sending data within the Data Shield section, and all I had to do was flip a switch. Anti-Stalker doesn't just stop there though. They also include an anti-theft alarm feature which plays a loud sound anytime someone tries to grab your phone or remove it from the charger. Perfect for airport charging stations. You can also quickly check which apps have been granted permission to access your microphone, internet, etc. within the Permission Manager, and there are a few more features thrown in there like a root checker and a mute microphone toggle to quickly stop the phone from listening to you. 
It's one of the best privacy-driven apps you can download, and the developers are constantly updating it with new features. It's also free to download, so there shouldn't be any reason why you're not already using Anti-Stalker. So improve your security right now with Anti-Stalker. The download link will be in the description. Sometimes I wish my phone could just do things for me without me needing to do anything or say anything. For example, it would be super helpful if my phone could automatically call a friend that I'm meeting up with to let him know that I'm nearby. Or if I'm on a train and want to take a nap, it would be nice for my phone to sound an alarm once I'm close to my destination. Luckily, these things and more are possible with Do For Me. It's an automation app based on your location. It'll present you with a map and you can mark any locations with a perimeter to have your phone start doing things once you've reached those places. For example, I can put a marker on my college campus to have it silence my phone every time I reach that place. Or I can also set another marker somewhere else and have my phone start voice recording once I enter the place and stop the recording once I leave. A little sneaky but useful if you're trying to secretly record a conversation. I'm not saying you should do that, but you can do it. You can also have it automatically send a message, open an app or website, start the flashlight, change the screen brightness and more. Give it a try, I guarantee it'll come in handy. If you're trying to take the best before and after photos, recreate a picture or copy a pose, Ditto will get the job done. This app lets you overlay any photo from your gallery to act as a guide for recreating the posing, angles, or photo composition. You can even see a before and after of the two shots to find out how similar they are. My favorite part though is that Ditto even includes some templates to get some ideas on how to pose if you're a couple, a group of friends, for your kids, or maybe even if you're just trying to post some cool travel pics. It's free to download with no ads. The only annoyance is that the pictures you take will have a watermark, and the only way to remove it is by paying a hefty fee of $4.99. Ouch. Other than that, the app works like a charm. Finally, for those of you who still have Root, I commend you. But you're probably also annoyed that the Magis app no longer includes a library filled with all the modules you could install. Instead, you're left to find them all on your own. I'm here to save you from that headache with Fox's Magis Module Manager. This app not only brings back that entire library of modules, but it also lets you quickly install any of them without leaving the app. It works like a charm and it's completely safe to use. I even love that it filters the mods by most recently updated and that there's a search button. Switching to the games, Hot Lap League Racing Mania is one of the newest racers on the Play Store and it's really well done. The graphics are amazing, the controls are easy to get the hang of, and the gameplay is spectacular. You'll be racing on some extremely crazy tracks with giant loops, large jumps, and a ton of twists and turns. Unfortunately, you're not really racing against other cars, you're just playing against the clock, but you can still see another ghost opponent on the track racing alongside you, so you can try to beat him. Of course, with every racing game, you'll also be able to upgrade your car. But if I'm being honest, it's not as fun as Gameloft's Asphalt 9. Still, with over 150 tracks to complete, you'll be able to kill a lot of time. Undestroyed Shadow ARPG is a 2D action game with robots, explosions, and really cool fighting actions. The main objective is to get to the end of the stage without dying. And that can be tricky, because even in the first few levels, there are dozens of monsters that have unique attacks. At the end of some levels, there are even some boss fights with some scary looking monsters. The graphics are spectacular, especially when you attack the other robots. Plus, I love how everything is darkened to make them look like shadows. It gives the game a creepy feel. The controls are okay, I just feel that there are too many buttons on the screen and it can get overwhelming, but it's still a spectacular game. Slim Labs 2 is a sequel and it's a pretty simple 2D platformer that has your typical left, right, jump, and crouch controls. In the game, you're a pile of slime that needs to escape a laboratory full of traps and monsters. Sometimes you'll even be racing against a giant flood of dangerous chemicals to the top of a level in order to escape it, while other times you'll be sliding through pipes, jumping from platform to platform, and even eating some of the critters around you. It's not the most addicting game I've ever played, but it's not terrible either. One thing for sure though, you'll enjoy your time playing this game for the first few weeks. Finally, I saved the best for last. Aerial Knights Never Yield is a 3D runner with a futuristic Tokyo style theme. In the game, you're always in motion, running, jumping, sliding, or dashing through aerobatic things with the goal of reaching the next checkpoint. 
At first, when you get close to an obstacle, time will slow down to give you a chance to choose what parkour move to do next. Choosing the wrong one will result in your death, and you need to start over from your previous checkpoint. It's honestly really fun, but it can get frustrating since you'll need to make fast decisions before time runs out. The controls are also not the best. I would have loved it if the game let me customize the jump and dash controls. Either way, it's still a fantastic game with cool looking graphics. Anyways, those are the best Android apps for May 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick style episode where we jump straight into the action with no intro. If you want me to do this for future episodes, please let me know by dropping a quick thumbs up and I'll do it in the next one. If you download at least one or two apps, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? I promise quality videos like this are released every week on this channel and you'll honestly learn so much by just sticking around. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching and sticking to the end and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!